Okay, here are two more advanced example solves on the 4x4 and just a reminder that I will be going reasonably quickly um, in these videos and assume a decent amount of experience with 4x4 solving. So to start out, I guess there are a couple of different options we can go for here. This yellow center is actually very easy to solve if we go like wide F prime, wide R prime, wide F. So I think what I would do is something like this. So wide F prime to attach these two, wide, and then I'll do a, probably a U to set these two up, wide R prime, L to move these two to this position, and then do a wide F. And that not only solves this first center, but also sets up these two for a very easy insertion. Now after that, I don't really see any edge pairs, uh, any cross edges uh, immediately right away. Um, so I guess I'd rotate and just do the default uh, white cross. So I've got these two, the white and orange, which I can solve like that. Then I've got the white and reds. And then I've got a couple of different options, either the white and green or the white and blue. I'd probably go for the white and blue. They seem reasonably easy to insert down there. And as I'm doing that, the first thing that I see after that is uh, are the green pieces. So I've got these two, this one and this one which are reasonably easy to solve. It's just like, and that's one thing that I do a little bit in my last four centers is slice moves like this with my, with my pinky finger. Um, they're not necessarily for everyone. Some people aren't able to figure trick it as well, but I use them sometimes where it's advantageous. So I've got these two red ones down here. So I'll remember that and I need to solve the red center onto this um, face. So I've got this one here and this one. I can put it onto the bottom and then finish off my red center and I can do a, a U as I'm coming down to make sure this bar is here and this bar is here and then finish off my centers. Now there's a couple of things I notice immediately. I notice that I've got this solved edge and I notice I've got this one and this one which are my last two cross edges. So if I rotate this way, insert this one and rotate back, then I'm going to break up the edge that's already solved by chance. So what I can do is do a wide R prime, then insert the edge like that, R, U, D2. Now when I'm going to do my first, my first um, three edge, when I'm going into my first three edges, I'm going to do a wide U prime this way, insert two edges into these positions, and then slice back. So wide U prime sets up this, white and uh, this yellow and blue one. This other yellow and blue one is here, so I would actually insert it like that. And then the blue and orange, the blue and orange is here. I can insert it like that. And now I've got these two and this edge solved. And what I can do now is start working on the next two edges. So I've got this uh, green and orange, this green and orange here. So insert the red and, red and green, red and green, slice back. Then I've got a couple of different options. I can go for the orange and yellow. And actually, well, this is another, I guess, advanced tip, but sometimes it can be okay to actually do your edge pairing with the two kind of slots that you're using on the right hand side here. So notice how I'm working with the right, the back right hand uh, edge pair, as well as this front right one. So I've set up the, these two, I can slice and then insert like that to solve those two. Um, so that's something that you can do sometimes to, to help avoid rotations. F2L pair. F2L pair, F2L pair, these two, um, OLL parity, and I know that immediately afterwards it's going to be uh, anti soon, like that, so I'm kind of getting ready. Now I've got an E permutation um, plus PLL parity, and then it's solved. Okay, looking around on this scramble, there isn't anything particularly easy to do for our first center. So I guess I would just try and do the yellow center quickly and try and influence the second center somewhat. So I've got these two, and then I can solve these two like D, R, D, L, like that. Then hmm, this isn't a very nice case at all, to be honest. Um, I might do something like, uh, 
Yeah, this is really annoying. I, either I can insert this and then I've got a one by two here and, and these diagonals here, which isn't a nice case, or I can insert one of these ones, set up a one by two here and then insert that. But that involves two rotations. Um, so I guess I'll just insert that, set that one up and then insert it. That's not very efficient at all, but um, yeah, we, we didn't have a particularly nice case. Then for my first edge, I would go for the white and green like that. Then I've got these white and yellow ones here. Sorry, white and orange like that. And then um, I can do the white and blues with this one like that. And the first thing that I see is obviously these three red ones and this red one down here. So I can insert them like that. And as I was doing that, I noticed the R2 move actually moved these two green ones here like that. So I'd rotate it forward and then do R2, U2, R2 to create these three greens here. Insert this last one and then finish off. And as I was, oh, wow. Okay, as I was doing that, I noticed that I broke this pair up, which is like, which like, I don't need to worry about too much. But I also noticed that I got these two solved edges and this solved edge. So I guess what I'm going to try and do is um, is preserve those because if we only have five edges left to solve, that means we can most likely do two edges and then three edges, which is going to be really easy. So I'm going to solve these two whilst preserving um, whilst preserving these three solved edges. So I can do slice, insert, d prime f, d prime, like that, and. As I was doing that, I also note I also solved this um, this blue and orange one. So now I've got four edges solved here, which isn't actually a particularly nice case. Um, I guess because I've got four edges solved, I don't know if I'd necessarily see this in a speed solve, but because I've got four edges, it some it might make more sense to actually just solve one edge and then and then solve the remaining three rather than solving two and then two. So for example, here I can rotate, then I can just solve these um, these yellow and blue ones by slicing, flipping, and slicing back like that, and then solve these last three just like this. So slice to create these two. Then I've got the blue and red over here. Insert, and then slice back to solve this one and this one. So those edges were, yeah, really easy. Um, but I guess in a speed solve, it might be a little bit harder to see that sort of thing. Um, so we've got a few different options for our first F2L well pair. I'll probably go for this one and preserve this one, these two, and then these two, like that, OLL, and PLL, and then we're solved.